welcome to Corner Cafe. I am your host, Rachel Mains. And on the Corner Cafe, our artist that we're featuring is Julie. Hey, Julie, welcome to Corner Cafe. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Rachel. I'm excited to be here. Well, we love having you. And so your artist name is just Julie? Just, well, Julie Elias. Um, I'm, okay. I bet it's just me. I don't have a fun band or anything yet, but. <laughs> hey, you know, that's, you know, there's plus and minuses both. Um, but I would assume then that you you do all your writing and um, have you co-written with people before? You know, I have before um, a lot of people that I've met through the local churches. It's just it's just really cool. You know, nowadays there's so many more resources and ways to to connect with people. You don't have to do it in person. You know, one thing we learned during COVID was we can do so much, you know, just over the computers, over Zoom, that sort of thing. Right. And um, I love writing with other people. Um, I love writing myself. Uh, in fact, my my latest album, a lot of the songs were written by myself because they were written in COVID, in those times of loneliness and uncertainty that I know every single one of us faced. Yes. So you make good use of the, yes. the COVID time by writing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's great. And uh, so your latest um, um, album is, is a Stampede? The so album? the album is, the album is called The Dreamer, but my new okay. song that's coming out is called Stampede. And that is... Um, so we say the penultimate uh, <laughs> COVID song, because it's about, you know, all the anxiety that that so many of us faced when the world that we knew was turned upside down. And I'm one of those people, I've always had so many things going on at one time. You know, I like to be busy. I like to go, go, go. I have a full-time job. I've got my music ministry. And as an independent artist, you know, if I'm not working for myself, you know, nobody else is. And so when right. COVID happened, um, I truly wondered if I was going to still have um, any future you know, in, in music on the other side, because churches were closed, you couldn't go into venues, like everything and just shut down. And, you know, with, with me, and I know you get this being an artist yourself, you know, when you lose any kind of momentum you have, it's so hard. It's so hard to rebuild. Right. Um, and so I had that stress going on. I had the stress of some, some personal health stuff. I got COVID. I got it pretty bad. I mean, not as bad as some people, but you know, I, I was sick um, for a long time. All my hair actually fell out. I got really ill, and um, wow. I had um, to put down my dog, like my first wow. dog I ever had. I couldn't go see my family. All my family lives out west, and I'm in Texas, and it was just like everything that could go wrong felt like it was going wrong. But it wasn't. It wasn't enough to totally put me over the edge, but it was enough to build me up to here, and that's how I got this idea for the song Stampede. So my saving grace during COVID was spending time with my horses. Um, that was one thing, you know, that we could do was be outside. And, you know, and I was, it, I remember one time seeing them run down the hill, you know, I thought it was cause they loved me, but it was really cause it was feeding time if we're being honest. And, um, you know, they were coming toward me and then all of a sudden as, as chaotic and crazy as it was when they were running toward me, then it just stopped. And here are these hmm. like huge animals that are suddenly peaceful and calm. And it made me feel like um, it was a perfect image for that anxiety because it gets up, up and up and up into here. And then you're trying to, you're trying to gather your thoughts, but then all of a sudden everything just stops and would become yeah. clear. And that stopping happened was when I asked God to, to intervene. Um, when mm -hmm. I asked God to, to come rescue me. Um, and it just, it just was so cool how, you know, I had these feelings and, you know, as a writer trying to find some, some cool way to describe it. Cause you know, everybody writes about hard times, but, um, right. you know, seeing those horses run and just having that personal connection, I was like, um, you know, God is there in the chaos. He is there when everything else seems like it's overwhelming. And one of the lines in the song is, um, God, keep my help and keep my head held high above the stampede. Because sometimes you just need that little lift to get the big picture. And I know right. during COVID, I kind of wish I would have um, had that mindset from the beginning. But Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you look happy and healthy now just going through Thank that you. challenging. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Wow. I had a fever over 100 for um, 10 days without any break. And then finally on day 10, um, people like my, my boss and one of my friends here in Texas was like, go to the hospital. We can't drive you because we don't want to get sick. But get out of bed, drive yourself to the hospital. And that was, that was a good thing. You know, they helped me get on some medicine and, but it was horrible. Yeah. All my hair fell out. I had some just long, long-term issues that I'm, I'm glad to say now, you know, a year and a half later have resolved, but 
man, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't fun. And I know a lot of people had way worse experiences than even, than even I did. Um, yeah. and I'm so, I'm so glad that I was able to still have some of that, um, creativity, I guess, during that season. Um, and like I said, so many of these songs on my new album, including that one stampede came out of that. Wow. Well, you know what? God can turn um, terrible things into good things. And so yes. I'm glad that you're you're remaining strong and positive mm-hmm. and, and doing your thing called singing and songwriting. Um, real yes. quick, describe your relationship with the Lord, um, how you, you, you know, I guess, testimony. It's testimony time, yeah. how you came yeah. to know him and how you decided, you know, I want to give this um, singing and songwriting and being an artist to try. Well, it's a long story and I know we don't have three hours, so I will try to condense it. (laughs) But, you know, it was, I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up going to church, but what's funny is when I was growing up, I sang in the church, but it was kind of because my mom made me. Um, It was not something I was particularly passionate about. I I always enjoyed it, Um, but I was much more interested in acting. And so when I went to college, um, I went to the University of Colorado, which I believe you did too. So that's kind of fun. I did. We're, we're buffs, Woo-hoo. which is great. Go buffs. <laughs> buffs. <laughs> yes. And so I did uh, their musical theater program at CU and, you know, got Excellent. some, uh, got some, um, you know, training in in music and everything, but it was really acting that I loved. So when I graduated, um, I said, well, if I'm going to try acting, I might as well go, go full bore. And I moved to Hollywood because that's where you went. You know, I knew musical theater wasn't really going to be long-term for me because I wasn't a good dancer. So anyway, long story, I could have been in Les Mis, but that's probably it. Um, and uh, so I went to Hollywood and I tried that for a couple years and it was really great. I had some good experiences. Um, I got to be like um, on a couple different TV shows and movies, which which was fun and some student films. But I remember a couple years into it, you know, I was, I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was criticizing my wrinkles, my eye bags, all that fun stuff. And I was only in my mm-hmm. mid twenties and yeah. it was a long time of just feeling beat up. You know, I would take a headshot, which I thought was the best picture of me ever made. And I'd send it to 200 different casting directors and agents and not one would even call me back. And yeah. that was like this crazy kind of rejection I had never felt. And I thought I was strong enough, but after that repeated over and over, I really began to doubt myself and said, you know, God, why did you make me this way? Why did you put this dream in my heart? But you made me look like this, that doesn't fit the mold of the little petite ingenue that Hollywood's wanting or whatever it was, whatever it was that was keeping me from going to the next step. But, um, I remember praying for the big picture and instead of praying for the right agent or the right part, praying and asking God, if this is actually what he wanted me to do. And I'd Mm -hmm. never done that before. And as soon as that happened, um, I got reacquainted with somebody I had known since I was nine years old. Um, I sang at a Christmas thing at the church. Our worship pastor just left and my mom volunteered me, even though I was like 20 something years old. And I sang (laughs) and this person was there who was also in the industry. And he was like, I I never knew you sang. And I said, oh, I don't. I'm I'm an actress. And he's like, I don't know. Like, have you ever thought about singing? I'm like, Hmm. no, not really. And he invited me to do a couple of um, concerts and stuff with him. And I remember at one of the concerts, somebody came up to me and talked about the song I was singing and how it reminded me or reminded them, I'm sorry, reminded them of their uh, daughter who had passed away. And it was a grown Mm -hmm. adult and they were just dealing with it and something about that song. And they said, I know God gave you that song to sing for me. And I was just like, I just felt more significance of my life in that 30 second conversation than I did in three years of Hollywood. And I said, I want more of that. And it was just so wild. Cause like I said, I've been praying for that big picture and here God was slapping me in the face with something. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll do it. You know, one of my biggest fears was, um, not being that perfect Christian. I always thought, you know, the girls on stage were just no problems, perfect, always know what to do, quote scripture all the time. And I was like, well, I'm not really that person. Like, I have a great relationship with God, but I feel like he's my buddy, yeah. not my college professor. <laughs> and um, I realized that that was okay too. And um, right. I started doing a lot with teenage girls and I think they appreciated that authenticity. Like, you know, I might not be able to have a scripture for everything you're going through, but I'm here to listen and tell you how God was there in my life when I had those problems. And I just, I just loved it. Like the whole culmination of feeling like I could be my authentic self could tell people about my real relationship with God and what that meant while creating music and singing and speaking. It was just, 
so on a path that felt so much more secure than anything else I'd ever done. Right. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes um, we can be insecure because we're trying to compare ourselves with others. And even in the Christian realm, you know, and I think a lot of people, sadly, um, and we're telling you, if you're listening and you're like, oh, well, I don't feel good enough or I'm not the, you know, what you perceive is the Christian, perfect Christian person. Well, no one's perfect. It's Christian. The whole mm-hmm. point of being a Christian is to say we're not perfect and we exactly. need Christ, all of us. And that's the point. Um, but yeah, there is that perception. And I, I love that you have a heart then to help young ladies um, with with all that. And you've been there, done that. And you can 